I was working as like a junior copywriter in an advertising agency. Jonathan Coleman was one copywriter who was never short on ideas. Uh, everyone was saying, you know, like, you're working in advertising, but your big future is in something else. It's not advertising. You should be in front of the cameras. Uh, so I basically wangled it so I would appear at the end of this commercial. I did kind of miscalculate it slightly. It was a fruitcake commercial for prize recipes. And uh, they used that, oh, never, ever, on a Monday or Tuesday, that song. And then I was right at the end of the commercial, dressed up as a little choir boy, and I said, even on Sunday. So I was the last thing that people saw in the ad. So they go, oh, there's that little fat guy from the fruitcake commercial. So they remembered me, but they didn't remember the product, which isn't really good if you're uh, wanting to survive in advertising. I'm a white brand fan. That's what I am. Jonathan Coleman, copywriter, isn't all that well known. Yet he's been involved in some of the most watched commercials on air. It's pressure, it's lighter, it tastes great to me. We wrote that in about uh, an hour. It's all pitched at mums and the kids or the people that make those decisions like, oh, mum, mum, get this bread, I like that ad. They're not wrong. So it's basically aligning the bread with, with a team of winners. Yeah! There was a, a campaign that was very successful years ago called uh, Uncle Sam. You need Uncle Sam. And that was written over lunch. Uh, I think the account executive actually came up with it over lunch. A lot of good ideas happen after the second or third bottle of wine. I've written a couple of things on, uh, on like, serviettes, and you give them to the lady at the agency, and you say, could you just type that up on our letterhead? Because it's pretty uncool if you present, uh, you know, like, napkins and things to the client. So Jonathan's break into television came because he was able not only to write an Oz commercial, but also cast himself in it. Well, she's, at the moment, she's got really very short, short hair, very modern. Um, Which one do you, do you really prefer? Uh, well, no, she's got really very short hair, blonde, very short cropped hair. Whereas um, Lisa, the other one, no, she's got soft sort of dark hair. I mean, they're both capable of 100%, so I mean, there's no worry with that. Now, what's, what's the run? Talk on National? Oh, I think you're looking about four grand, four, four to six grand. Just depending on who you get, really. For casting agent Pam Stockley, life's a wall of headshots and series of phone right. calls dealing with ad agencies. Oh, well, leave it to me. I'll just uh, organise negotiating a fee and um, all of that sort of stuff. You get a script, you look at the script, you're briefed by the agency, briefed by the director. And it's, it's a matter of getting people in. I usually go through a formula of, of trying to sort of sift them out by giving them 35 mil stills first and they say yes we like this sort of person that sort of person fine uh, then screen testing and hopefully they'll say yes we like one person or no we hate them all so you back to the drawing board and you get more people in it's just a matter of elimination until you find somebody that they like yeah, so what are the guidelines that you keep in mind when you are casting uh, to always try and find someone fresh and new, because that's what they're always looking for. They want, you know, somebody 35, great presenter, but never been seen on television before. Ho-hum. <laughs> I mean, you know, who's 35? If they're really great, they've usually done something. Up we go. Or about to do something. There's many an actor who can claim to have stood in front of Pam Stockley's little casting camera okay. and gone on to bigger and better things. Okay, and... Every night around this time, my dog Ratbag wants his dinner. So every night I feed him Chub. Ratbag will tell you that Chub's a nutritionally balanced meal for dogs and cats. and has up to 50% more protein than... For most actors, casting for commercials rates on the same scale as fear of spiders. Because I'm messing this up, aren't I? Yeah. We'll do it again. Okay, let's start from the beginning. Even if an actor is well known or has a track record in previous commercials, a screen test of some sort may be required by agencies. But not all casting for commercials can be solved by making a cassette for agency nabobs to view at their leisure. That's why, as a casting exercise, the Rio commercials from a few years ago were amongst Pam's favourites. Because it's hard to find people that are interesting looking being natural on screen. It's not real! She especially remembers the woman who played a security guard, the girlfriend of a visiting American basketballer. <coughs> Real. She got into the spirit of the thing, and she really enjoyed it. And I think that comes through with those commercials. They look as if they're having fun, and people relate to that. Australia's creative directors related to Tall and Beautiful in picking Oz TV's number eight commercial. 
She's got a taste for the gold and brown Men folks wonder where she's bound She make men stop and look around Looking for the gold and brown It's the best drink she's found Oz TV's seventh greatest commercial campaign was about as far from exotic beverages as possible. That's why Hoover is ahead of the rest. The push button Hoover Premier can handle a whopping five kilos of washing. The competition can't. That's why Hoover is ahead of the rest. Many of the oldies have been the goodies, and the staying power of some commercials and their jingles is amazing. Those such as Vegemite are like the good black and white movies of yesteryear. They come back for a rerun or colorization. Ads like Vegemite, Louis the Fly, Mr Sheen and Sorbon have been around since the beginning of Australian television, yet they've been sent out to work time and again in different forms. Take it away, Tully! What's the gentlest issue? This update of Sorbent is merely a reworking of this. Right, everybody, all together. What's the gentlest tissue in the bathroom? You can issue why it's Sorbent, Sorbent, safest for sure. Sorbent's economical, its sales are astronomical. Buy Sorbent at your favorite store. Every powder puff soft sheet gives gentle comfort, absorbency and strength. And there were variations in between. Here's the biggest selling brand of toilet tissue in the land. Soft, strong, gentle, sorbent. Mothers who care know that only sorbent is soft, strong, gentle. Best for all the family. There's even been an operatic version. Then they broke away from the pattern for a while. It stands. A silent sentinel in a million backyards with sorbent toilet tissue at the ready. Sorbent's also very strong. Softness and strength make sorbent rather special. But more often than not, the tune, though stylized, remained in the background, just waiting for the chance to be sung again in 1988 by a cast across Australia. And everybody Australia, nothing else is good enough. Just what effect choral singing has on our ablutive and associated buying habits isn't clear. But you may remember this rival brand, which depended on fresh-faced singers years ago. There must be something about toilet tissues, or tissues in general, that gives jingle writers the sheer joy of producing happy sounds. But Don Willisey broke the mould when he decided to talk to a tissue in 1977. And you're very good value. Well, we've always been good value, and now with the improved softness. And gentler, and better than ever for beautiful faces and tickly noses. Thank you, Scotties. Thank you. White. Irresistibly white. That's the whiteness only McQueen toothpaste can give. In general, wholesome ads and happy jingles were responsible for the selling of personal care products. In fact, remakes of this early McLean's ad are back on screen again. Are you But if you dippity didn't, the jingle-free Tony twins had your attention. Which twin has the Tony? You can't tell? Nobody can. Not yet, anyway. But wait. Now you can tell. Not much has really changed from the early days. There's nothing to show that today's ads sell any better than the oldies. 
costs have soared and technology has made some things easier. But as they found out on the Shell Ultra shoot, even today's technology can't stop rain. It's the natural enemy of commercial production. Oh God, I love you, Rick. You're not... <laughs> it's just Pollyanna. <laughs> It meant a weekend had to be absorbed into production time. So wouldn't it be just as effective to have someone standing in front of a petrol pump to promote the product? The viewing public should be sympathetic to the fact that we're trying to make a very good, stunning piece of advertising. So it's, uh, I mean, certainly we could have a, a crass presenter standing up there and going for it, but I think uh, this is a nice case of well, we're trying to make advertising as least painful as possible for the viewers. There'll be time for one jump before the ideal light has gone. Five, four, three, two, one. The cameras are checked and for what he considers a bread and butter stunt, driver Claude Lombert is given temporary folk hero status. Well done Claude. Very good. Very good. After days of delays, members of the crew are eager to agree they've got a good take in the can. Could be a good look. It's been a long slog in order to film the underside of a pre-owned Celica. As it turned out, problems other than weather meant the whole lot had to be reshot anyway. Perhaps Shell Ultra was never intended to find a place in the great commercials, unlike the Apple computer series, which took the art of subtle advertising to a new high. How'd you get the extra budget, Frank? For what? To get it looking like this? No extra budget. Did it all on computer. What? One of ours? As for number five on the list, the message was loud and clear. If great sporting names like Craig Johnson feel like a twoies, so will you. I feel like a twoies, I feel like a twoies, I feel like a twoies or two.